Hi there, coming back with another Blu-ray DVD update. This one is quite a honker. I went uh, pretty ham sandwich, as one of my favorite Bluetubers says, uh, WrestleManiac, aka Blu-ray Maniac, 1130. Shout out to him. Um, but yeah, I'm not going to waste any time, just going to jump into it. I got a bunch of uh, Blu-rays to show you, and uh, start with, I got five DVDs here. Three of them are seasons. I got Louie, season one. Gotta love Louie, the show's amazing. Uh, Louie Season 2. And Louie Season 3. Um, still need to get three and or 4 and 5. I'm not sure if the show's coming back. But I got all three of these for 25 bucks, which I thought was an awesome deal. Um, but yeah, uh, I can't wait for the 4th and 5th season. No, I'll get it eventually. They're a little expensive. But uh, if you don't know, the show's just fantastic. It's a really good... Uh, Louis C.K. is a comedian. If you, if somehow you don't know, and uh, he, this is kind of not curb your enthusiasm, but kind of in that style, but more like in. Uh, it's hard to explain. More like independent filmmaking sort of deal, and Louis does everything on these shows: directing, editing, writing, starring, everything. But anyways, moving right along, I got Out of Sight here on DVD. Um. Really cool movie, like a heist sort of deal, um, and like a prison breakout sort of deal. George Clooney, Jennifer Lopez, quite a few other people in this movie. Fing Rames, uh, but yeah, it's uh, based on an Elmore Leonard bo book, and it actually makes a cool guest appearance from uh, Ray Nicolette from uh, Jackie Brown. Like Michael Keaton makes an appearance, really cool. Interesting movie, I had never seen it before, picked it up on DVD in like mint condition for two bucks thought I'd give it a go uh, Ernest in the Army kinda wanna get all the I do wanna get all the Ernest movies uh, in some way or another They're, they have like collection sets uh, but I'd actually prefer getting them all individual and uh, there's only like a couple on blu-ray so for now it'll have to be it'll have to do I'll be on the lookout for Ernest and this one not the greatest one but it's it's still Ernest, and it's still pretty funny, I guess. Uh, the worst one I I would say would probably be Slam Dunk, er, Slam Dunk Ernest, or maybe Ernest Goes to Africa. But yeah, I got some uh, new releases here. Got Ride Along, really great movie here. Uh, I thought it was a lot funnier than people were saying. People were saying that it just wasn't any good, or like it was just kind of the same bullshit as the first one. But I I, I like that. One. I liked that one quite a bit. I thought it was uh, great, and I think this one's just as good. It's still funny to me. Uh, I would recommend checking it out if you like the original. So, yeah, Ice Cube and Kevin Hart. Great movie. Here's one that was I was so happy to get. I loved this movie when I saw it in the theater. I actually seen it twice in the theater, which is kind of rare, but I, I loved it. I thought it was fantastic. Leo, obvious, er, clearly did an amazing job thus why he won the uh, Oscar for it um, I think Tom Hardy was a little shafted because he he did an amazing job and uh, it, and like I can't believe that Spotlight beat this movie for best picture of the year it's just ridiculous Spotlight was a good movie but The Revenant was way better uh, directing, cinematography, acting, all of it. It was just way better. Um, and, like, Tom Hardy, he got shafted, but so did Mark Ruffalo, and definitely Sly got shafted. Uh, Stallone, the guy from Bridge of Spies, wins Best Supporting Actor. Are you fucking kidding me? That was a terrible decision. Sly should have won because of the amount of awesome work he's done over the years, plus he did an amazing job in Creed. Tom Hardy was fantastic, way better than fucking uh, the guy from Bridge of Spies, and even Mark Ruffalo from Spotlight. And like I said, I don't have a, th I don't hate Spotlight or anything. It's just kind of a one-watch movie, but it's definitely not as good as this movie here. But this is a fantastic film. Looks amazing on Blu-ray. Really cool uh, slip cover for it. You open it up like that. Really awesome. And yeah, just about this dude, Hugh Glass, who. He, he's out collecting pelts with uh, this group of men, and he ends up getting attacked by a bear. Fuck, that's an amazing scene. Uh, he's 
and uh, he's all fucked up. A few of the guys stay behind uh, to help him and give him a proper burial when he does pass, but uh, one of the dudes decides to cross him over, uh, or to cross him over, to like double cross him or whatever, and, and just fucks him over pretty bad. I don't want to say too much if you haven't seen it. And uh, the movie's all about him trying to survive and even the score. I'm a really big fan of revenge movies, survival movies, and this has got everything. Leo is a beast in this movie, and Hardy's fucking fantastic. The end fucking scene is just brilliant. Brilliant to me. So, uh, here we got Bad Boys 1 and 2, with uh, awesome buddy cop comedy action movie here. Ten bucks on Blu-ray for both of them, really good. Bad Boys 1 was out for quite a while, but 2 wasn't coming out, and then finally they released this. Um, yeah, this is Michael Bay at his best. I don't really care for those Transformer movies, but I like when he makes good action movies like this. And uh, today I'm going to give away uh, some UV copies for both these movies. So, here we go, here's Bad Boys, and here's the code. One, two, three... First come, first serve. You snooze, you lose. <laughs> Bad Boys 2. Here's the code. One, two, three. First come, first serve. So yeah, hopefully you, hopefully you redeem those and enjoy them. Um, really, really cool grabs. Uh, I was in a bigger, a big, like I live in a small little town. It's not like ridiculous, it's not like super small, but it's definitely not big enough and it, that it has a Best Buy and uh, a HMV and stuff like that. So I was in a city a couple days ago and I ended up going to like Best Buy and HMV and quite a few different stores like that because I'm jealous that they have those stores. And uh, yeah, I made I got some pretty cool deals. Uh, here's one. I got Stripes Steelbook. This is the Pop Art Steelbook. I was really happy to finally get this. I've wanted to upgrade my DVD copy for quite a while. When I seen this, I was like, oh, I need to own that. And this is one of my fucking favorite Bill Murray movies. It's so funny. And that's a fact. Jack! I like, what kind of training? Army training! <laughs> uh, fucking John Candy's awesome in it. Harold Ramey's. The guy who plays Francis, the drill sergeant, just a classic, classic comedy to me. And what an amazing edition. I love this edition. And it is it is the extended cut as well. So yeah, that's Strice. Got that for 10 bucks, brand new. And uh, when I went to Best Buy, I ended up getting a couple Mondos here. I, I don't own any other Mondos, uh, but when I walked in, I seen this one here, Nightcrawler. Absolutely love Nightcrawler. It's probably to me like a modern classic. Just fantastic movie. As you can see, it's still sealed, and I'm not going to keep it sealed. It's just uh, I'm ordering uh, steelbook protectors. So until I get them, I'm just going to keep it sealed, just to keep it safe until I get my steelbook protectors. Uh, and yeah, so that's Nightcrawler. Fantastic movie. What an amazing addition. Uh, when you actually pull out the steelbook, it looks fucking wicked as hell. But yeah, uh, these are awesome collections. Mondo's, uh, this is number 12. I also, I like how they're all like numbered. But uh, to collect all of them would be quite, quite a fucking effort. Um, and it's just like way too expensive. But they are really awesome. I'm not going to go after a full co complex, uh, com yeah, collection. But I'm definitely going to, if I see them... If they're cheap, if they're usually if they, you get them when they're right new, that's about the most you'll pay for it. This I paid twenty four ninety nine for. That's Nightcrawler, fantastic edition. So happy I went into Best Buy. I will be keeping my original version of Nightcrawler because that's how much I like the movie. And I like that artwork as well. And then I also got Total Recall, which I only paid nineteen ninety nine for, but this is a wicked, wicked edition here awesome just the cover's so sick great arnold cheese paul verin ver how do you pronounce his name verhoven he's an awesome sci-fi director but yeah there's hank from breaking bad with his one eye and just just great this steelbook's got so many cool little details all the like uh don't let life pass you by all the total recall sayings a bunch of it's like the whole advertisement there 
if you see, you can't really see it there, but it says Quato lives. And again, I will be opening this once I get a steelbook protector. From what I what I heard, this is the mind bending edition. So yeah, both these movies here, awesome, awesome. I love the the Mondo steels. Uh, like I said, I'm not gonna try and hunt them all down because it would be ridiculous. The drive one is fucking awesome. I'd love to own that one day, but it's probably super expensive. And just they're great, great steel books. So uh, if I see them on the cheap, I'll pick it up, and uh, I'll be looking for the new ones as they release. One I do really want to get is the thing, but I imagine it's probably expensive too. Anyways, got to zoom right through this. I got so many pickups to go through still, like lots of Blu-rays. So I'm not going to talk a ton about each one, but certain ones I will drop some uh, discussion about. But here's Tommy Boy, the Holy Schnikey edition. Chris Farley, David Spade, classic. Probably his best movie. Awesome. I've got, got, got four awesome Disney movies here. This one I didn't have. The Fox and the Hound and The Fox and the Hound 2. Really great to pick this up. Some awesome Disney. I, I love the original one. I've never seen the sequel. But yeah, great, great movie. I'm happy to pick it up. I only paid like 10 bucks for it too. I found all these at a pawn shop and they were all in great condition. They did have Dumbo, but it was scratched. Out of all of them, Dumbo was the one that was scratched, which I was just like, oh well, I don't really love Dumbo that much, but I'll get it eventually. Alice in Wonderland here. Happy, happy, happy to <laughs> uh, upgrade this one. Great, great film. I love Alice in Wonderland. I imagine that'll look wicked on Blu-ray. Haven't thrown it in yet. Robin Hood. Not my favorite Disney movie, but it's still pretty great. I enjoy it every once in a while. It's a very, it seems very long for, it's not even that long a movie, but when I watch it, I always find that it kind of drags in a lot of parts. But that's Robin Hood, 10 bucks as well. And the best of that Disney score, because this one is extremely expensive, is Lady and the Tramp Diamond Edition. I, I've seen this go up to like 200 bucks on Amazon and, and stuff like that. So I got I paid 15 bucks for this, so that's a fantastic deal to me. Lady and the Tramp, great great movie. I I've always enjoyed this one. It's very classic, and I'm happy to finally own it on Blu-ray. So yeah, that's it for the Disney's. I was pretty happy with that little score. And moving on, Ernest Scared Stupid. When I was in that city, I went to this uh. I went to a pawn shop. I went to H and V. I went to Best Buy. And when I was at that pawn shop, it was in a mall. Uh. Just a little bit up, there was this like uh, used video game store. I just kind of went in looking around, and uh, they had a bunch of Blu-rays and DVDs as well. And uh, as I was skimming through, I found Ernest Scared Stupid, which again is very rare. Uh, it's quite expensive online. I think I've seen it go up to uh, around 60, maybe 50, I'm not sure, one or the other. But I've always wanted to upgrade this to Blu-ray when I found it. It was on Blu-ray, and uh, I'm finally happy I... I finally did and I love this movie it's uh, probably my favorite of all the Ernest so yeah Ernest scared stupid can't wait for Halloween to throw this on moving right along the never ending story this is some great childhood uh, memories for me I love this movie growing up really cool very uh, inventive imaginative movie um, awesome creature effects and stuff like that there's the rock muncher he's a connoisseur of rocks and limestone <laughs> she's ridiculous at the end of this movie when she's like, Sebastian! <laughs> just, yeah, like, the cool dragon dog. <laughs> um, just all the characters and all the cool effects in this movie are great. And uh, I've always loved it. The one thing that all, always bothered me as a kid, and, and still, as an adult, it, it really affected me. I'm like, what the hell? What's going on? Is when uh, fucking Artax? 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 I can't I can't remember the horse's name. It's something like that. But uh the horse just like they end up in this like swamp of gloom and the horse just gives up and he just pretty much kills himself in the swamp and it, it's just like why is the horse dying? <laughs> why why is he just giving up like that, man? <laughs> Anyways, moving along. That's the never ending story. Love that movie as a kid and it's still great. It looks amazing on Blu ray. But here's the Punisher War Zone with uh Ray, what's his name again? Ray Stevenson. 
really this is a, actually a really good version of the Punisher. Uh, it I I had a friend a buddy I have a buddy of mine who was I always mentioned that I wanted to see this movie and he had seen it. He said it's really good and he knows I like the Punisher Max comics with by Garth Ennis and stuff. And those are just ridiculously graphic and awesome. And uh, he's like, yeah, you got to watch Warzone. It's a lot like that. And I finally watched it. I picked it up. Got it cheap. Picked it up pretty much as soon as I got home. I threw it in. I watched it. It was fucking awesome. It's not like the best story ever in the world. But the action and the, the way it looks. And the and the characters like Jigsaw. McNulty from The Wire. He, he's great in this movie. Uh, just, It's very cheesy, but... It's definitely not Dolph Lundgren Punisher cheesy. It's a uh, really great, and I love the stylized uh, sections and just the action and how graphic it is and like gory. It's like when people get like their heads shot right off. It's fucking intense. But yeah, moving right along, and that's the Punisher War Zone. Great, great movie. I enjoyed it quite a bit. If you're a fan of the Punisher, you'll like it. Hancock here, Will Smith. Uh, his version of a comic book movie. I enjoyed this movie. I haven't seen it in a long time. It has Charlie's Theron, uh, Jason Bateman's in this movie. The little boy who plays Michael Myers in the Rob Zombie films. But yeah, it's kind of like a reluctant superhero. And then eventually, <clears throat> in the end, he kind of turns things around. But yeah, that's Hancock. Finally upgraded that. Got it actually from the dude who sold me the uh, Louis things, and he gave me a free slip cover for a uh, skate plan, which was really cool of him. Anyways, moving right along, we got Hellboy, the Golden Army. Excuse me as I have a sip of my Tim Hortons coffee. <sighs> Hellboy 2, the Golden Army. I love this movie. I think it's actually a little better than Hellboy 1, just more to it. And the action's wicked, and just it, it's great. And, uh, yeah, I've been wait I've been waiting on this in the mail for quite a while. Finally showed up, mint condition. Loved the movie. Threw it on, watched it, it's just as good as I remember. Let's go with the Hellboy 3. Come on now, before Ron Perlman's, like, way too old to even attempt to do it. It's like, I don't know if it's ever gonna happen. El Marachi and Desperado double feature. Love Desperado. Haven't seen El Marachi in a long time, but I've been wanting to get this, this double pack on Blu-ray. So I was really happy to finally pick it up. Great, great Robert Rodriguez movies. I like Desperado a lot. Just fantastic. Now I just need to get Once Upon a Time in Mexico. The Messenger. It's a great film. Uh, really proves, once again, why I think Ben Foster's just such a great young actor. Like, I think he's one of the best out there, young actor-wise, working. He's just... He, I don't know if it's him or the people who kind of manage him or what, or maybe it's just Hollywood not taking him seriously, but he doesn't get enough chances to do starring roles because he's fantastic. Check him out in Lone Survivor, the original Punisher, um, 30 Days a Night, uh, Six Feet Under, he's amazing in this show, and in this movie here, he's great, and uh, yeah, he just doesn't get enough chances to me, uh, and uh, yeah, but... It is what it is. Hopefully one day. Oh, and three day, three ten to Yuma. He's fucking fantastic in that movie. <clears throat> but this movie here is uh, about Woody Harrelson and uh, Ben Foster. They're two like army soldiers whose task is to go around and inform family members of their uh, their family member who was in the army that, that they passed in, in service or whatever that they died. And it's just intense. It's really hardcore, the sort of things that they have to go through, and uh, as the story progresses, just like this really cool drama tale, um, don't want to say too much, it's really good to just watch it on its own, but yeah, like Steve Buscemi makes a cool appearance in this, uh, really good acting from him, I'm trying to remember who's all in it, but yeah, great movie, it's, it's made by the same guy who did Rampart, and yeah, if you haven't seen The Messenger, you like war movies, it's definitely not a war action movie, but it's based on the the uh, effects and the consequences of war. So I would highly, highly, highly recommend this movie if you haven't seen it. The Messenger. Another, another Woody Harrelson movie here. Got a cool edition of Natural Born Killers. It's like a digi book here. The book goes up a bunch of pages. The disc pretty cool. It looks like his earring. And... Uh, yeah, Natural Born Killers. Not a huge fan 
Uh, like, I like this movie quite a bit. Um, the story-wise, I like the characters. But I'm not a big fan of uh, the way Oliver Stone directed and kind of, like, edited it together. It's very, like, oddly frenetic. <clears throat> and not in a good way. Like, I've seen some movies where that really works. But in this one, just kind of, like, all over the place all the time. Um, very messy. Um, but it's still, it's still good. Uh, I think, uh, what happened originally is Quentin Tarantino wrote the story for this movie, and, uh, he wrote a screenplay, and what Oliver Stone and uh, another person or persons did was, like, rewrite the script, so Quentin got all upset and said, well, you can just fucking take my name off the screenplay and give me a story credit, because I don't care, and I don't think he's ever even watched the movie, but, uh, yeah, so maybe that's kind of it. I kind of wish that, you know, what it could have been if the, it was just more, like, not so all over the place and weird, but it's still a good movie. I enjoy it. Uh, Juliette Lewis is great in it. Woody Harrelson's fantastic in the movie. <clears throat> Robert Downey Jr. is pretty hilarious in this movie. Uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, what's it? Tom Sizemore is great, and Tommy Lee Jones is pretty cartoonish. But yeah, that's a really cool addition of a movie of the movie. Favorite part is uh, the Robbie, Rodney Dangerfield segments. But moving on, Vanishing Point. Love this movie. Kowalski's the man. And yeah, just an awesome car chase film. And it's pretty much about this dude who, an ex-cop, who uh, got dismissed from being a police officer through some uh, events that I won't spoil. And uh, he ends up becoming like a car racer, a, a thrill seeker. And uh, eventually he starts like delivering cars across the country. And he like takes drugs to stay like on like speed and shit like that to like stay up all night and full throttle it all the way and he, he just kind of is constantly you know trying to take things to the limit. It's really great. The ending's fantastic. It, it's a very it, you would think it's just kind of like an action cheesy movie, but it's actually a really good story to it and kind of a uh, fantastic. Uh, uh, Death Proof, Qu again, Quentin Tarantino in Death Proof, they reference this movie quite a bit. So if you like the end of Death Proof or the, any of the car ch segments, you're going to like this movie. Uh, that's pretty much all this movie is. So if you haven't seen this movie, check it out. It's fantastic. Looks amazing on Blu-ray. Shutter Island, one of my least favorite uh, Leo Scorsese collaborations. But I still enjoy it. It's okay. It's kind of like a... Um, a mystery thriller sort of deal and it takes place on this uh, mental asylum on an island here and uh, it's just kind of about it's got like all this like mental fuckery it's a very interesting movie it's good it's just not one of my favorite collaborations from these guys Gone Baby Gone and The Town got both these uh, Ben Affleck directed films both of them are really good Ben Affleck's a really good director Gone Baby Gone is really cool, but this little girl who goes missing, and uh, Casey Affleck uh, takes it on, upon himself to uh, find out what happened to her and get to the bottom of the story. It's really good, awesome, uh, uh, authentic Boston crime story, um, and Ed Harris is great in the movie. Um, just some sweet, sweet scenes in that movie. And then The Town, really cool, like, bank robin movie. Uh, Ben Affleck stars in it as well as directing, and I believe he like co-wrote both these scripts. Uh, Jeremy Renner, uh, what's his name? Uh, John Hamm, Blake Lively, Rebecca Hall, and the, both these movies are really cool. They 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 seem very authentic and just really great. Can't wait. I, have, I still haven't seen Argo. I can't wait to see what he what Ben Affleck does with Batman. That'd be really great. But yeah, that's those two. Got source code here. I haven't seen this movie. Like I, I think I tried watching like the first ten minutes of it way back when it came out, but I ended up having to do something or something. But uh, I've heard nothing but good things about this movie. Apparently, it's kind of got like a minority report sort of deal going on where the government can like uh, prevent terrorism, so with like future sight or something like that. I can't remember exactly what the idea is, but I'm looking forward to uh, checking it out. Jake Gyllenhaal is awesome and pretty much all his movies nowadays so I'm really looking forward to checking this one out because I've heard nothing but good things 
Here's a movie that I picked up blindly. I didn't know anything about it. Just looked cool. The synopsis sounded great. And I'm a big fan of like revenge movies. And uh, this is a western starring Mads Nicholson. He he is great in this movie. Jeffrey uh, Dean Morgan is like the main villain in this flick. He's really great. The guy who plays Negan on The Walking Dead now. And uh, Eva Green. And just a really great movie. I enjoyed the hell out of this. Uh, I went into it blind, which I rarely ever do just blind by a movie but i really did enjoy it it's uh it's about this like polish i think it is he's like he's an immigrant anyways uh sweden or polish or something like that he's an immigrant and uh seven years prior he left his family back home and he came to the west in in the americas to make uh, you know a life for himself and get all set up seven years pass his family's now coming and uh he picks them up at the train tr station. They get on a, they get on a wagon to go to his place, and uh, on the way there, they get assaulted by these crazy cowboy guys, and uh, they end up with. I don't really want to spoil too much, but they end up uh, murdering his wife and daughter in front of him. Uh, or not quite, but you have to watch the movie. Uh, they end up murdering his wife and daughter. He fucking awesomely deals with them, and then. Uh, one of them ends up being the brother of this crazy outlaw here, Jeffrey Dan Dean Morton. And it's all about this, like, uh, big build-up to a stand. And there's lots of cool action in between. But, uh, and, like, the drama's great. Just great acting overall. Mads really fits into it. The finale, like I said, the big showdown is just awesome. And, uh, I highly recommend this. If you like westerns, give this movie a shot. The Salvation. Fantastic. Bad men will bleed. Yeah, great, great movie. And I was really happy that it came with a slip. I've seen this movie go up to like 20 25 bucks, but I ended up getting it at $10 at Walmart, brand new with a slip. So go check it out. Check out your Walmart. And maybe it'll be there. True Grit, another cool western from uh, Joel and Ethan Cohen. Really great uh, remake of uh, John Wayne's movie here, but based on the Charles Por uh, Portis book. I actually have that book. But, uh, about Rooster Cog Cogburn, and, uh, this little girl here, played by Haley Steinfeld, uh, her, her parent, her dad is killed by, uh, Josh Brolin's evil character, dastardly character, character, and she hires, uh, Rooster to go after him and bring him to justice, and it's r really good, awesome scenery throughout this entire movie, amazingly acted. Like I said, the cinematography is great. It's a Coen Brothers movie. It's pretty much perfect. So, yeah. And Jeff Bridges is fantastic. American Beauty. One of the best movies of all time. Just fantastic. Uh, Kevin Spacey and Ed, Ed Benning. Both of them are great. The the daughter and Mila... Uh, what is her name? Mina, Mina Servari is great. Uh, the the crazy boy next door and his parents. Everyone in this movie, acting wise, is amazing. Written by Alan Ball, the guy who did a Six Feet Under. Just an amazing movie. And it's re uh, directed by James. No, 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 Sam Mendes. Um, and it's just really great. Uh, it's about like kind of like midlife, um, and the uh, just hard to explain. Kind of, it's just kind of like the about the mundane aspects of kind of growing old and coming to a point in your life where things aren't exactly where you thought you'd be and you kind of feel drawn down and you don't really know how you got to this point and uh kevin space that's what's happened to kevin spacey and he's kind of like a beaten down man and he eventually just kind of has like a revelation he's kind of alive again and he starts taking his life by the horn sort of deal and it, it's it's fucking fantastic movie. I highly recommend it. The acting is out of this world good. And like I said, one of the best movies of all time. Excellent drama. Got Olympus Has Fallen here. Picked it up at uh, the Walmart 788 bin with the slip cover in mint condition, which is rare for slip covers in that bin because, as you probably know, they all get thrown around and shit. But really happy to finally pick this movie up heard nothing but good things apparently it's like a really awesome action die hard type movie in the white house i checked it out it was fucking great the action is balling uh i i would say it's better than white house down um i'm looking forward to L london has fallen not much more to say just uh, pre the white house gets taken over by these crazy terrorists and uh 
the president's captured, and Gerard Butler's this uh, secret s security guy, and he has to go in there and uh, extract him the best way he can, and it's just awesome, awesome action. Very graphic and brutal. It's actually directed by Antoine Fou Foucou or whatever, Fuqua, I can't pronounce his fucking name. He's an awesome director guy who did Training Day, Southpaw, all that shit. But yeah, Olympus has fallen. Check this movie out. Looking forward to seeing London. The Book of Eli. Great Denzel Washington movie. Kind of like the, uh, I can't remember exactly what's going on in this movie. It's like a post-apocalyptic sort of deal. And uh, But I just rem what I do remember about this movie is there's lots of great action. Denzel's awesome in it. And uh, I'm really looking forward to fucking finally. I've been wanting to get this on Blu-ray again for quite a while. I've seen it for about ten bucks, but I ended up finding it at a pawn shop, used with the slip in great condition. Like it's not the, it's got a tiny ding, and, but overall it's in great condition. Five bucks, and the disc inside and the case is just mint. So finally, I'm happy I held off for that because I got it at a great price. We got Shanghai Noon, Shanghai Nights, pretty great action martial art comedy movies with uh, Jackie Chan and Owen Wilson in a western setting. Good stuff here. Good little double feature. Attack the Block. So happy I finally picked this up. I've been waiting to get it for the price to come down. It seemed like it was only going up. So I said, fuck it. I'm just going to buy it at, I think I paid around 16 bucks for this movie. Still a good price, but I was hoping to get a little cheaper. But it's absolutely fantastic, very original, funny, awesome action, and just overall super watchable. As soon as I got this in the mail, I threw it in, and I just watched it straight through. No, I, I didn't, you know, get distracted or anything, just watch it. It's so fucking awesome. The the slang dialect they use is great, the, the comedy's funny, the action's great, and uh, it's pretty much about these local hoods in London, in this, like, uh, kind of lower class area and uh as they're robbing this chick here one night because they're kind of like hoods like i said um uh asteroid comes shooting down from the sky and it inside it is like this alien creature it attacks moses who's played by jo uh, john boyega who's finn in uh star wars now and he's great in this movie um they attack him they they chase the thing down and before long more asteroids come with more crazy creatures, and uh, they all start getting uh, chased and surrounded by them. And they go to this big, uh, like, apartment building where they all live, and uh, it's just awesome. It, awesome movie. It's so fucking great. Action's wicked, like I said. Special effects are really cool. Nick Frost is a small little role in this movie. He's hilarious in it, and just amazing. If you like Shaun of the Dead and stuff like that, and uh, Hot Fuzz and those sort of movies, you're going to like this movie. World's End, you're going to love it. So, if you haven't seen Attack the Block, check it. Check it, fam. <laughs> uh, Spaceballs, your helmet is so big edition. What can I say? Love this movie. Um, Mel Brooks classic, John Candy, Bill Pullman, um, Rick Moranis, who's so funny in this movie, as Darth Helmet. And uh, this edition, really cool, came with like these bumper stickers, along with some art cards, but the bumper stickers are wicked. It's got like, I love Uranus, and <laughs> we stop for no one, we break for no one. So yeah, this is a great classic comedy parody from Mel Brooks, parodying like uh, Star Wars in general, but also, you know, like science fiction sort of drama, or er, science fiction, fiction sort of movies, so yeah, great stuff, Spaceballs. I like. Uh, I actually have the VHS for this, and it's like Spaceballs, the video cassette, which is pretty much all they do in this movie, marketing-wise. Uh, I have a huge VHS collection now. Um, you can probably see up there. There's my Disney VHS. Really got a lot of VHS now. But yeah, uh, one of these days I'll make a video for the normal VHS. I have made um, some videos, a, a recent collection video for my Disney VHS. I also did a complete collection of films, but this this is updating it, obviously. But if you haven't seen those uh, videos, go check them out. Um, so anyways, moving along. Shaun of the Dead. I love Shaun of the Dead. Everybody knows that movie's fantastic. 
and Hot Fuzz. I had both these movies on, uh, I've had them twice. I had a double pack on DVD, which I upgraded for a double pack on Blu-ray, but when I got it, no special features at all on, the, on that double pack, so I really wanted all this cool special features on these Blu-rays, so I triple dipped on this. Hot Fuzz, Shaun of the Dead, fantastic films. Moving along, Dazed and Confused, which uh, a lot, I've heard a lot of people say this is like one of the best comedies of all time. I really, really did enjoy this movie, but to me, it's not a, all that hilarious. Like, uh, it's not like straight out funny. There are funny parts. It's a, it's got its moments, but overall, it's not so much a great comedy as a great film. Like, it's a great movie. Uh, with a cool story. It's like the last day of school and. Uh, all these kids are getting out, and they're all kind of hanging out together and stuff like that. And uh, the young, the freshmen, the sophomores, they all kind of go against each other and shit like this. But it's got a great cast, an amazing soundtrack, like really good soundtrack. Ben Affleck is O'Banion, uh, Mila Jonovic, Jason London. That's the main, like the main character kind of. Uh, Joey Lauren Adams, Parker Posey, who's quite the bitch in this movie, and. Uh, uh, Matthew McConaughey is probably my favorite character. He's just such a, <laughs> he's just such a creepy fuck. And like I said, just a brilliant, brilliant film uh, by Richard Linklater. Absolutely brilliant. I can't wait to see the. Uh, I can't remember what it's called, but there's a movie that's going to be like a spiritual successor to this in the 80s. I can't remember what it's called, but it looks it looks very good. Um, but yeah, really happy to pick this up. Like I said, just a great film. Not so much the best comedy of all time, just a really great film. On the other hand, we got another teenage sort of thing. I think this is the first day of school. And uh, Fast Times at Ridgemount High from 1982, I believe. And this movie's just fucking great. Spicoli here, Spicoli, played by Sean Penn. He's so awesome. He's the fucking man in this movie. You got Judge Reinhold, uh... Jennifer Jason Lee, who's fucking great in this movie, and super awesome naked scenes, uh, nude scenes in this movie. Uh, Eric Stoltz, uh, Nicolas Cage makes an appearance in this movie. Um, everyone knows and remembers the scene with this woman here. I can never remember her name. Oh, what is it? I can never remember it. But uh, she, she has an awesome scene where she gets out of the pool, and everyone knows that. And uh, yeah, it's written written by Cameron Crowe. Really good stuff. So yeah, if you haven't seen Fast Times at Ridgemont High, it's a fucking cult classic for a reason because it's absolutely brilliant. And again, a great soundtrack. And this one to me, Dazed and Confused is just a great film, but this one to me is actually like really, really funny. Like pretty much every other scene, I'm laughing at something. So yeah. <laughs> you dick! <laughs> um, moving along, 30 minutes or less. Underrated, don't hear enough people talking about this movie. Really good stuff. Very funny. Danny McBride, Nick Swartzen, Jesse Eisenberg, just doing his normal Jesse Eisenberg shtick. Aziz is really good in this movie. And yeah, I don't hear. I don't think this movie is appreciated enough. Directed by Ruben Flesher of Zombieland. Check it out if you haven't seen it. It's great. We got Jaws. Classic, classic movie here. What can you say? It's Steven Spielberg. It's it's a masterpiece. Fantastic. Um, coming out, it, I think at the beginning of June, Jaws 2, 3, and 4 are being released individually on Blu-ray. From what I remember, I've only seen the sequels once, back when I originally checked this movie out. I like 2, so I'll probably get to pick that one up on Blu-ray. But 3 and 4, I don't remember enjoying that much, so I'll probably stay away from those. Unless they release like a Jaws 2, 3, 4 collection set on Blu-ray, which they do have that for DVD, but... Yeah, that's Jaws. Great, great film. Amazingly shot. Apparently, I still haven't got around to watching this yet on Blu-ray. Apparently, it looks brilliantly good on Blu-ray. Just awesome, awesome special features. So, yeah, that's Jaws. We got George A. Romero's Land of the Dead. Fantastic. Finally upgraded this. I've had it on DVD since it came out on DVD way back in the day. So, I'm happy to finally own it. Great. Uh, the fourth entry in his zombie movies, so happy to finally have it, and I really, I really enjoy it. I like Diary of the Dead quite a bit. Um, Survival of the Dead is probably my least favorite. That one's not that great to me, but yeah. All I need now is Day of the Dead on Blu-ray. Oh, well, and Night of the Living Dead and the remake, but those are pretty. Uh, I don't know about the first normal George A. Romero one. It's probably cheap enough. It's public domain, but the remake. Uh, 
the Tom Savini remake is very expensive. Anyway, it's moving along. 30 Days a Night. Really happy to finally have this uh, upgraded. Cool zomb uh, vampire movie, sorry, uh, takes place in like this, uh, what, what is it, the Ar Antarctica or the Arctic? Alaskan town. And uh, where every once in a while, I think it's like once a year or something like that, or whatever, there's 30 days of night and these vampires find out about it. They show up and they take total advantage. The vampires in this movie just look and are awesome. Uh, the main vampire in particular. Like I said, Ben Foster's great in this movie. And from what I've heard, it'll look, it looks amazing on Blu-ray. And I'm not surprised. The contrast of the blood and the snow and the, the, the design of the... It's based on a graphic novel and it's got a really cool design to it. So yeah, I'm very happy to check this out. I probably like I really enjoy watching this movie in the winter because it's kind of it's got that feel obviously where it's in the winter and but I'll probably watch it before then because I definitely want to see what it looks like on Blu-ray. Another vampire classic here, uh, The Lost Boys, awesome movie directed by Joel Schumacher, uh, and yeah, just some classic vampire cheese fest movie <laughs> and uh, yeah, everyone knows this, the Frog Brothers and the. Kiefer Sutherland, the vampires, and their cool cave, and yeah, just a great, great classic movie. I've always enjoyed that. Also have that on VHS, so, and I threw it on, and it's just as great as I always remember. And another, I, another movie that has a really good soundtrack. We got Jeepers Creepers here. It's a great movie. I hadn't seen it since it originally came out, uh, and uh, I picked it up really cheap, about five bucks. Um, <clears throat> didn't really remember a lot about it. But ended up really, really enjoying it this time through. Uh, I haven't seen the sequel, and 3's coming out soon. Um, Scream Factory's actually re-releasing the Jeepers Creepers movies. Uh, but, I don't know. I'm probably fine with just this. Really great, like, creature uh, film. Very original and classic um, take on a mo movie monster. Uh, J Justin Long and his sister have great chemistry in this movie. It's just overall awesome. Like, it's just fucking fantastic. And it's actually uh, produced by Francis Ford Coppola, so it's got some uh, it's got some weight to it there. Um, moving along, we got Dolan's Cad uh, Cadillac. Um, picked this up. It's a Stephen King movie, and I'm a huge fan of Stephen King. Um, this is based on a short story of his, and I've never seen it, uh, apparently. And like I've said a couple times now in this uh, video here, I really like revenge stories, and uh, what this is is uh, this character here, who I'm pretty sure is the crazy neighbor from American Beauty. Not sure. I, haven't, I still haven't watched this yet. And uh, his wife and daughter, um, no, just his wife, gets murdered by this uh, mobster who's played by Christian Slater, and it's like a revenge tale to even the score sort of deal, if you can, if you're, <laughs> after your wife's murdered, but yeah, Dolan's Cadillac, haven't seen it, looking forward to it, big fan, I want all the Stephen King movies at some point or another, for good or ill, another Stephen King, Secret Window, probably my favorite Johnny Depp movie, uh, I just, like, his best performance to me, and one of the few occasions where the movie's actually a little bit better than the book, which was called Secret Window, Secret Garden, in, uh, uh, before Midnight, or something like that, uh, I can't remember what the collection's called, but just Before Midnight or something like that, but, uh, great, great movie here, I enjoy it, it's about this author who's kind of a recluse after some stuff goes down with his wife, and, uh, she's cheating on him, and, uh, he, he's written all these screenplays, and just randomly one day, this dude shows up, Shooter, at old Mort Rainey's door here, and he's accusing him of plagiarizing, and, uh, he gets this, the guy's, uh, manuscript, and it's, like, pretty clear, although he doesn't know how, that he has, uh, plagiarized, so, and it's all about him, like, figuring it all out, and it's just great, I love the finale of this movie, I love, this movie's really rewatchable, if you pay attention the second time th through, you're gonna notice a lot of cool things that you, you were kind of manipulated into not seeing, it's actually written and directed by David Coep, so really great. I love this movie. Uh, I'm 
fucking so happy to finally have it on Blu-ray. Because it goes for not a lot, but it's definitely more expensive than I wanted to pay. And I got it five bucks in mint condition at that pawn shop, so really happy. And Pet Cemetery, which is a classic inside. Um, I had a double feature of Pet Cemetery and Pet Cemetery 2. So I kind of went ahead and pillaged my fat DVD and made this a, a two-pack. Although, like, I probably don't watch Pet Cemetery 2 as much as I watch 1. But I definitely like it enough where every once in a while I want to watch it. And I don't really care to get it on a standalone Blu-ray. So, Pet Cemetery. Sometimes, Dad's about up. I <laughs> love this movie. It's so classic. Great, great effects. It's still, it's cheesy and the, the effects aren't, like amazing but they do hold up pretty good overall uh just great love this movie great book too um moving on last house on the left i got this and three more before the video uh the last house on the left this is the original west craven movie i'd only seen the remake up until this point but i picked this up uh checked it out the remake stays very close to the original but i prefer this one a little bit and it's just crazy boundary breaking uh original 70s cinema and it's just very awesome uh it, it's fucked up and depraved but it's just really cool examination of the uh evil inside all human humanity and stuff like that and, and then again at the end of the movie a wicked revenge sort of spin on it but yeah like i said not for the queasy it's pretty graphic in moments but awesome movie wes craven did a great job on that I think that's like his first movie. I'm not sure 100%, but I think it is. <clears throat> Moving on. Adam Green's Hatchet 2. I actually really enjoy this Hatchet series now. Uh, at first, I wasn't really loving it, but uh, by the end of the first Hatchet, I loved the movie. It just took me a while to get into it. Rewatched it. It was great. Uh, finally picked up Hatchet 2. I just bit the bullet. I'm, I just said, whatever. Whatever they want for it, I'll pay. I, I didn't pay too much, about 15 bucks. The sequel, which I actually liked even better than the first one. Victor Crowley lives. Great movie. Um, I still need to pick up the third, but yeah. Awesome slasher. If you haven't seen Hatchets, definitely check them out. And we got ourselves, to finish this off, Cabin Fever and Hostel 1 and 2 here on Blu-ray. Pay two bucks for that. Which is a good deal. That's about as mo the most I'd want to pay for Hostel 1 and 2. Not a huge, huge fan of these movies, but I, I enjoy them enough. It's pretty fucked up. Makes you not want to travel and get ended up tortured by a bunch of rich people who do it for fun. <laughs> it's pretty fucked up. But uh, Cabin Fever here, really great movie. I enjoy this one. Still to my, to this day, probably my favorite Eli Roth movie. I After this and the Hostel movies, I haven't really liked anything he's done all that much. But this is fucked up. A bunch of kids go to a cabin, and before long they're exposed to this fucked up flesh-eating disease. And they start turning on each other, and it's just fucking cre crazy. One of my biggest fears is to get anywhere near a disease like that. So, yeah, awesome movie. Finally happy to have it on Blu-ray. I've been wanting to upgrade it for quite a while. This is the director's cut, which I don't even think I've seen. So, yeah. Eli Roth's original classic. So, and there's a sequel to that and a remake for some reason, so I don't think I've, I ever need to watch those other ones, but I definitely needed this one. So yeah, that is one mega, super, epic, ultra, me <laughs> ridiculously humongous Blu-ray update. Uh, I went pretty crazy this time around, but uh, a lot of them I got really good deals on, so I'm pretty happy with this haul. I hope you've seen something here you enjoyed, or... Maybe you just enjoy watching these videos in general. Um, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, like it, if you, and subscribe if you like. And uh, yeah, hopefully you guys have a good day or night. And as always, be easy. The name of my company is Video Production News. It's a professional gathering service for news. That <laughs> that's how it should be read. That's how it should be said. Anyways, mahalo.